Corre, corre, bevo un bordo, tutto è tanto, dai, 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 second and third graders of Seattle, we are going to learn about coins and fractions. If you have some U.S. coins lying around, go grab them. We'll look at them together. Penny, penny, easily spent, copper brown, and worth one cent. Pennies are easy to identify. They are the only coins that are brown. They are also easy to count. Just count by ones. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Nickel, nickel, thick and fat, you're worth five cents. I know that. Nickels can look a little bit different, depending on when they were made. But all nickels are a little thicker than other coins, and nickels are the only silver coins with smooth edges. Can you feel the smell smooth edges of a nickel? To count nickels, just skip count by fives. Five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Dime, dime, little and thin, I remember, you're worth 10. Dimes are interesting because they are smaller than the penny and smaller than the nickel, but they have a higher value. A dime is worth 10 cents. You can always identify a dime because it's the smallest and thinnest coin. To count time dimes, we just skip count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Quarter, quarter, big and bold, you're worth 25 cents, I'm told. The quarter can look lots of different ways. But a quarter is always the biggest of the common coins and has the highest value, 25 cents. Skip counting by 25 seems tough at first, but you really only need to know four numbers. Then they just repeat every time you reach a dollar. 25, 50, 75, a dollar. One dollar 25, one dollar 50, one dollar 75, two dollars. $2.25, $2.50, Now, we aren't talking much about bills today. They are easy to identify because they list the value in words and numbers very clearly on each bill. The bills you see and use most often are the $1, $5, $10, $20, $50 and $100 bills. Here we have some coins that are not so common and some bills that aren't common either. In fact, on this page, I've only ever seen the Sacagawea, the gold dollar coin, the 50 cent piece, and the $2 bill. But $2 bills, $500 bills, $1,000 bills do exist, but they're very rare. Now, you will probably see the gold coin most often. Here we have three different dollar coins and a 50 cent piece. If you don't have all the same kind of coin, you're going to want to organize your coins by value before you try start to start skip counting. That way, it makes it a lot easier to stay on track. Personally, I like organizing into rows and columns. We're going to count fast. 25, 50, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103. Do we get it? Penny, penny, easily spent. Copper, brown, and worth one cent. Nickel, nickel, thick and fat. You're worth five cents, I know that. Dime, dime, little and thin, I remember, you're worth ten. Quarter, quarter, big and bold, you're worth twenty-five cents, I'm told. There are more coins as well, but you don't see them much. 
looked around my house, there were none I could touch. Once you have learned the value of coins and bills, you can also use them to work with fractions. Here's a fraction bar. Below the fraction bar goes the denominator. The denominator tells us the total parts that make up the whole. Above the fraction bar, we have the numerator. The numerator tells us how many parts we're talking about. Now, let's make some fractions by breaking up a dollar into equal parts. This dollar will be our denominator. Now we can break up a dollar into lots of equal parts. We could break up a dollar into quarters. We could break up a dollar into dimes, nickels, pennies. Another way to describe the value of a dollar is 100 cents, while the value of a penny is one cent. So this fraction can be written like this, one out of 100, or one one hundredths. How would we write this fraction? Well, first, probably gonna wanna get organized. I like to use an organization that looks like a 10 frame because it makes it very easy to count accurately. In fact, I can build a 10 frame without even really counting. 10, 11, 12, 13. I know what that 10 frame looks like. What would this fraction be? Go ahead, say it out loud. Hmm, some of you are right. 13 out of 100 or 13 one hundredths. Now, did you notice we are using cents as our unit instead of pennies and dollars? In fractions, it helps to use the same unit in both parts. Otherwise, you might write 13 one hundredths as 13 over one because there were 13 pennies and one dollar. But no, my friends, that is inaccurate. It will confuse everyone. You gotta have the same unit. What would you call this fraction? Remember, we need to make sure we are using the same unit. Dimes and dollars are not the same unit. They are both money, sure, but one dollar is not the same value as one dime. Now, there are a couple ways you can change a dime and a dollar into the same unit, but since we've already been using cents, let's keep doing that. How do we turn three dimes into cents? Hmm, one dime is worth 10 cents. It's time to skip count. 10, 20, 30 cents. So we would write this fraction as 30 out of 100, or 30 one hundredths. Let's try another coin. Here we have three quarters. Same number of coins, but very different value. A quarter is worth 25 cents. Skip count with me if you can. 25, 50, 75. This fraction would be written like 75 out of 100 or 75 one hundredths. Teachers often ask you to compare fractions. Sometimes it's pretty simple. Three dimes out of a dollar or 30 one hundredths three quarters out of a dollar or 75 one hundredths makes it pretty easy to tell which one's bigger. 75 one hundredths is greater than 30 one hundredths. Here are some game pieces I borrowed from my Golden Girls game. They're pieces of cheesecake. Every part is the same. We can use fractions to describe the cheesecake. How many total parts are there? One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. So eight is our denominator. To find the numerator, we need to decide what we're talking about. Let's see, how many of these pieces are strawberry? Well, one, two out of the eight pieces total are strawberry. So two eighths of this cheesecake is strawberry cheesecake. What fraction of the pieces are blueberry? That's right, six out of the eight pieces are blueberry, or this cheesecake is six eighths blueberry. These fractions are also very easy to compare. We can see it in the cheesecake and we can see it in the numbers. Six is more than two. So there are a greater number of blueberry pieces and a fewer number of strawberry pieces. But third graders and some very brave second graders who are still watching, it's not always quite so simple. Let's say your teacher asked you to compare two fractions, five elevenths and two fourths. It might seem easy at first because five is more than two, 11 is more than four, but super awesome mathematicians can use a model to make sure they are accurate. A model is really just anytime you draw a math drawing that helps you visualize. I like to use paper. You can cut paper, like I did, or make a model by drawing. First, let's build 5 elevenths. Let's create a model. All right, so the denominator tells us how many total parts we need to divide this into. 11. I've already taken the liberty of doing it. Luckily, I used a ruler, which I had handy, and noticed this paper was 11 inches long. So, uh, I did it on the pink paper, I mean, this paper is now in 11 equal parts. And we're talking about five of those parts. So let's make five of them a little different. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five elevenths of this paper is shaded. Let's put that to the side and build two fourths. Now, I've got another paper. They're both the same size. So we're comparing the same size papers. Here I already divided it into four parts. I'll tell you how I did it, or one thing you can do if you need to make four parts of something. Fold it in half and then fold it in half again. When you open it up, you'll have pretty close to four equal, or four parts that are pretty close to equal. Okay, now we're marking two out of those four parts. So let's go ahead and mark it. One part, two parts. Now we can just use our eyes to compare these two models and find out which is larger, two fourths or Five elevenths. Hmm. Well, it looks like two fourths is more or larger than five elevenths. Remember, the smaller the parts, the more parts it takes to make up the whole. It's game time. Have you ever played tic-tac-toe? If so, you know that playing tic-toe tic -tac -toe, is very easy, but winning tic-tac-toe can be a little more challenging. That's a lot like this game, Race to 20. It's easy to start playing, more challenging to play it well. Here are the rules and materials. To play Race to 20, you will need paper, pencil, or nothing but two people. You don't have to write it down, but smart players write down equations that match their counting. Here's how to play. 
Starting at zero, players take turns counting up by saying the next number or the next two numbers. For example, player one can say one or one two. Then player two can say the next number or the next two numbers. The player that gets to say 20 wins the game. Coming up is a little video that will show you how this game will look. See if you can notice what the players in this game do to keep track of their counting. <sighs> Grandpa, I'm bored. How about I get out the number line and teach you and Grandma how to play a new game? It's called Race to 20. Whoop. That sounds like a good time. Oh, here comes the number line. Oh, boy, that was dangerous. Okay, Grandma, we're going to write down what equations we make. You go first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All oh, right, I rule. Yes, coins, fractions, race to twenty. I think that's enough for one math video. Thanks for joining me. I'm gonna go walk my dog. Have a great week.